Hey y'all, this is Joe at St. Bernard Acres. Well, I'm not at St. Bernard Acres because guess what? It's raining again. It looks like we're going to have a whole week of rain. So, again, I'm doing things around here. I'm, I'm at home. And I thought one of the things I, was, I will do, I get a lot of uh, questions about solar systems. Um, not just, you know, on my channel, but on, you know, some of the Facebook groups I, I belong to. I see uh, a lot of people struggling with solar. And I, I think what part of the problem is, uh, people make it overcomplicated. It's really very simple. And I don't know if, you know, making it overcomplicated makes somebody feel like they're smarter than other people or what. Uh, but, they, you know, all of this, this stuff they try to get into, it just, it, it's very confusing. And I wanted to do a video on just the basic equipment and how easy it works, how solar actually works. Um, because people don't know that. And they ask questions and they, they get all these numbers. Well, you know, how many amp hours this lasts for this and what you got to do here. And it doesn't, you know, you can do all that on your own. This is your setup. I'm just going to tell you basically how it works. Uh, none of these products do I endorse. None of them do I not endorse. This is what I've used. Um, and we'll start with the solar panels. Now those, what I've got here, these are going to be doing my shed here. If it ever stops raining, I'm going to put solar in this shed. And this is some of the equipment I'll be using. Now a solar panel it's basically how it works it allows photons or particles of light to knock electrons free from atoms generating a flow of electricity that's what a solar panel does these are two 100 watt solar panels that i bought when we had the rv out at st bernard acres and I wanted to experiment with solar. I didn't know anything about it. I just knew that's what I wanted to use. So what I'm going to show you here is the stuff that I started with. You got your solar panels. The only thing they do is take the light and convert it to electricity. That's all they do. Um, that's as simple as you can make it. That's what a solar panel does. So in order for this to work, you want to create the energy, you want to create the electricity, you have to have a way to store it. So you can use it later when the sun isn't working. That's what the batteries are for. This is just a deep cycle battery from Walmart. I bought two of them in April of 2014. I used these for three years out at the RV, out at St. Bernard Acres. They still work fine. They've spent the last three years sitting in the floor of the old shed. They still hold a charge great. I never let them drop too low. I never abused them. I'm going to use them for the shed. I don't need this much. You know, I've got two of these. Um, I don't need that much, but I'm going to have them. Um, this is a gel type battery. This is a battery that needs maintenance. You got to put water in, you got to check things like that, you know, distilled water. Uh, this is 114 amp hours. Now, I bought these. Somebody was upgrading their solar system uh, down south of Morgantown, West Virginia. So I drove down and bought six of these. These are three years old. They're 100 amp hour batteries, but I got six of them. So I'm going to be able to store a lot for just, you know, the cabin, you know. Uh, but it was such a good deal that I went, went ahead and picked them up. The solar panels you can get right now for about $180 for 200 watt solar panels. 
These batteries are 100 bucks a piece uh, at Walmart. These run around $250 a piece, $300 a piece. I got these for $50 a piece. That's why I bought the six of them as soon as you know I saw the ad. There's no maintenance on these. They don't have to be vented and all that kind of stuff while they're charging. And they can be wired up in parallel or series the same as these type of batteries can. So, you've got the panels which produce the energy. You've got the batteries which store the energy. Electricity. The panels produce electricity. The batteries store electricity for you to use later. In order for this to happen, you have a charge controller. These are called charge controllers. They run from $15 to $1,000. But this is just a generic 30 amp charge controller. That's all it is. So what this does, it protects your battery from being overcharged. And it takes the electricity from the solar panels and distributes it to your batteries plain and simple you've got a positive and a negative uh, that comes in from the solar panels you've got a positive and negative that goes to the batteries to charge them and you have another positive and negative which will go out to any 12 volt lighting or the cigarette adapters you know if you got a uh, 12 volt DC uh, cooler or something. You can run directly off of this. This won't do anything for your AC power. Anything 110, it's not going to do anything for. But this will protect your battery. This one happens to have, you can charge USB devices while it's there. And it'll tell you the state of your battery. It'll tell you how many amps you got coming in, how many watts you got coming in, how many amps are in your battery uh, so that it doesn't go too low. Um, it'll give you all that information that you need and this one was about this is a 30 amp um, I think let me look no this is 60 amp because I was going to use this out at the uh, cabin because I've got the 500 watts worth of panels out there um, so this I was going to use at the cabin this was probably forty dollars forty five dollars you know how well does it work I have no idea I haven't used it yet but that's your charge control you have to have that now you've taken the electricity from the solar panels to the charge controller to the battery bank you need wires a lot of wires you need with MC4 connectors most of them are but you know, that's about the most expensive part of this stuff is all the wiring involved. Um, but you have electricity now stored in your batteries. My batteries are going to be wired into my fuse box, my service panel at the cabin. So I have 110 throughout the cabin. In order for that to happen, you have to be able to convert the 12 volt DC power to 110 volt AC power. For that, you have an inverter, which will provide you. Now, this is one I used in the RV, and I just simply plugged in an extension cord here, and I, you know I ran a fan off of it, a TV, and that was about it. Uh, but your batteries will hook up back here come from positive and negative off your battery bank these are fuses um, but this was a thousand watt inverter um, it inputs let's see if that'll show up 12 volt DC output is 110 volt uh, AC power which is to run your appliances you know your regular electric uh, lights and Fan, you know, ceiling fan, stuff like that. So, what we've done now, we've 
generate electricity through the solar panels. We've sent that to the charge controller. From the charge controller, we've controlled how much of it goes into the battery bank. Uh, to keep it from overcharging or anything like that. That's why it's a controller. And from the batteries, we've taken that electricity and sent it to an inverter, which will output it in a form that we can use. That's it. You know, these cables are expensive. I make my own, but you need heavy, heavy cables for your battery banks, for your inverter. Uh regular number eight and number ten cable for the solar panels and what's going in and coming out of this uh, charge controller but there's all kind of, there's a thousand videos a month put up about how to set this stuff up and probably 10 million web pages um, I just want the purpose of this video is to show you is nothing to be afraid of and it's very easy to do. It's a, a, a small system is a DIY thing. You don't have to shell out a bunch of money to have somebody come in and put in a small system for you. You know, I'm going to have, out at the cabin, I'm going to have 500 watts where the solar panels and 600 amp hour batteries. I don't need six, but, you know, it was such a good deal I bought them. You know, with those six batteries, I'm still not going to be able to run my air conditioner. So I'll have to use the generator to run my air conditioner out there. But it'll be set up to where if I do have to use the generator for power, it will also charge the battery bank. Because it will wire in through a different kind of uh, charge controller. I mean, I have to spend some money on one. But uh, if it reaches that point, then I can charge my battery bank off the generator and while powering the cabin so that's it that's the basics the simplicity of it all and uh, I just want everybody to feel comfortable with it not be afraid of it there's nothing to be afraid of it's an easy thing to do and if you have any questions ask me down in the comments uh, if you like this make sure you give me a thumbs up you know Subscribe if you want to see more about the solar. I'm going to be doing more solar stuff as well as everything else. If, you know, if I don't have to build an arc. But that's how easy it is to deal with solar. You know, a wind turbine is going to do the same thing. It's going to have all the same components, basically, except instead of a solar panel, you've got a wind generator. Uh, but it's going to go through a charge control. It's going to go to the batteries. It's going to have to go through an inverter to convert it to electricity. You know. And with during the day, if you've got good sunlight and long time, what you your batteries are going to reach a point where they're just floating. They're fully charged. Uh, some days out at the RV, by 10 o'clock in the morning, the batteries were completely charged and they were just in a float state. Well, I had all this power still coming in from the solar panels. So I was basically just running that electricity off the solar panels. It still went through everything, but it wasn't needing to store any because the batteries were already, you know, 100% full. So with that extra power coming in during sunlight, you know, if you have enough wattage coming in, you can run, you know, a saw or a drill or something like that if you were out there working so that's something to keep in mind but again i hope this helped you know like subscribe share share this with people who are thinking about it and are maybe afraid of it or don't understand how simple it can really be uh but yeah i can't wait till it's you know i can get to where i can start putting stuff up and showing you exactly how it all goes together again but this is Joe out here in the shed on a rainy, rainy day. Uh, I'm out.